Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the new film, Nymphomaniac, Volume 2. Now, the first Nymphomaniac I actually thought was a lot more fun than I usually expect from Lars von Trier. It seemed stream of consciousness. It almost seemed stream of conversation. It felt crazy, and I never knew what to expect, and it was fun not to know what to expect. And it was actually kind of a fun movie. I kind of anticipated while watching Volume 1 that this was eventually going to turn out to be bad as she gets older. And when she's younger, it kind of worked out for her, but as these habits go on, they get worse and worse, almost like an addict. And she is a sex addict, even if she refuses to call herself that. Instead, she's a nymphomaniac, according to her. I just wasn't as into this movie, and it felt more like Lars von Trier, and felt less crazy. It felt less stream of conversation. It did kind of feel like the previous film at the beginning, but then it feels more like a complete film, less of these individual different parts with different little scenarios. That wasn't as fun of an experience, and it was a far more depressing film than I saw with the last Nymphomaniac Volume 1, and I was kind of disappointed. Now, Nymphomaniac Volume 2 takes place directly after Volume 1 with the character of Joe, at first played by Stacey Martin, only in a few scenes, and then eventually they cut three years further and she's played by Charlotte Gainsbourg. Shia LaBeouf is still played by Shia LaBeouf for a little bit but then when you see his character much much later he's played by a different actor which is a little confusing because wouldn't the three years all those people are played by different actors same with Charlotte Gainsbourg was that like a commentary on how women age differently than men was it just a idea that wasn't really well thought out did they just really want to see Shia LaBeouf in a weird English accent I don't know but Charlotte Gainsbourg plays Joe throughout this section of the film, even though Charlotte Gainsbourg is playing Joe as she continues to tell Stellan Skarsgård about how she's a terrible person. And it goes from her not having any feeling in her cunt, as she says, I'm quoting her on that one, and she goes to any lengths to get that sensation back and extreme lengths and even some kind of S&M stuff and then eventually works for like some mob enforcers although they don't call themselves that and Willem Dafoe's involved and it slowly gets darker and darker for her and you see how it got worse and worse for her now she eventually wound up in the alley where Stellan Skarsgård found her and we're in the situation we are now in the story. As I said before in volume one I wasn't a huge fan of Lars von Trier and this is kind of more in his usual depressing route. I don't think I'm as interested in this. I kind of like the playful Lars von Trier that I saw in volume one. Sure, I understand it kind of makes sense in this film. She has to go down that road. Things have to get worse. If you are a sex addict, it's not going to get better. And it does get a lot worse, showing what the addiction has really done to her. And it kind of works with the story and everything, but I didn't really like it as much. I thought these two volumes are a lot like what happened with Kill Bill, where it's one film cut into two. This film just kind of starts, which is a little off-putting. I kind of would have liked to have had him come up with some sort of a beginning. At the beginning of volume one there is that Rob Stein music and everything and it would have been better if volume two started kind of the same way to get you into it at least. It just feels like he really cut volume one as one piece and volume two was just what was left over. It's supposed to be kind of a thing because when she loses her virginity in volume one she gets three thrusts in one orifice and then five in another and the first one has five parts and this has three which is like a cute little thing he did but it just doesn't feel as well organized almost as, as thought out. Thematically it is, and I think it kind of works for the overall story, but I'm not as surprised as I was as Volume 1. Volume 1 I was really kind of like, hey, this is kind of cool, I was kind of into it. But I see it as a complete thought, and as a complete thought I think it actually works, but as two volumes I think I prefer Volume 1 because Volume 1 is a lot more fun. Had I seen it as a whole, that division wouldn't really be there the way it is currently in my view of it because I'm seeing it in two different volumes. And volume one being separate from volume two, it feels like two different experiences. And I don't know if that worked as well as it does with a Kill Bill volume one and volume two. In this, it really does feel like what's left over. And sure, it is a complete thought, but I think Volume 2 might work a lot better with Volume 1, although I think Volume 1 can work by itself. And it did feel like I wasn't seeing a complete thought in Volume 1, which is definitely a problem with just the first volume, and it's a plus 
that the second volume definitely succeeds in fulfilling. I like Charlotte Gainsbourg a lot in this film. Um, I think she's very good. I like Stellan Skarsgård. Some of the things just felt like, like, oh, we have to be extremely disturbing. Let's push it as far as we can. And in volume one, I didn't feel that way as much. Just felt like this film was out to be as miserable as possible. For a film that it's its whole thing, let's have people looking like they're coming in the poster and all this stuff, and it's the big thing this is a sex movie. I saw a French film, Strange by the Lake, which I thought was far more explicit because you're actually seeing people coming in the film and it's like done in one shot and it looks like you're really watching these things and in this film there's so many cuts during the sex sequences it just looks like a bad action sequence that was badly choreographed it kind of almost didn't look as believable apparently he cut down the more explicit version which i feel like he just says because it sounds better it, it doesn't feel as nasty as this film wants to claim it is first film i didn't notice it as much but in this one i do i kind of think it's just the Hollywood magic. I'm not like, oh my God, this is like these big actors doing this thing. It's like not really that crazy at this point. It just doesn't feel as interesting as an audience member. It just left me feeling depressed and sad. And that feeling stuck with me for a while. And I guess Lars von Trier has something there. It feels like a lot that Lars von Trier is very talented and he's a, he's a good director. I feel like often he's kind of so interested in being depressing and being outrageous. There's definitely a good director in there but often I feel like he's too much of the provocateur and not enough of a filmmaker. And his natural ideas, you know, there's especially parts towards the end that I was just like, ugh, really? It's just, what are you doing with this? You know, what are you trying to say exactly? I liked what he was saying with the character of Joe, but his overall dealings and sexuality were really more demented, more like trying to shock you. In the first volume, it was playful and fun, but in the second volume, it was just depressing and like, what are you, why do you keep doing this? I really wonder what the point is in having his films be a big deal because I feel like we're just seeing the same depressing crap over and over again. And I'm like, kind of like not getting what the big deal was. I really loved like Dancer in the Dark. I feel like he has a playful nature, but his depressing nature, I think took over in a really superficially forcing a point home kind of a way that I don't think really works for him as a filmmaker. This just felt almost like kind of a separate, more depressing, usual kind of Lars von Trier kind of thing. And maybe maybe I'm just not really into that. Maybe that's what I was thinking. I was like, man, now I, I remember why I didn't really even want to see these films at all. It kind of reminded me of what I don't really like about him. And it's not that it's depressing. It's just that it's trying to say something to me and kind of blow my mind about sex or something. It's like, it's, you know, it's 2014. I have Tumblr. This, this girl with S&M and everything is, it's, I mean, that's really sad. And that's what I got out of it, that it's sad. And it's sad that him as a director still thinks this is like really gonna shock me. And it sounds like more like kind of a clueless uh, older suburbanite trying to freak you out. And you're like, yeah, I see that all the time. There's this thing called the internet and sometimes you can't avoid it. It means more to him and I think it's more shocking to him in his own world. And he thinks the film community is totally up in arms and really it's just playing at an art theater. And it's important to them for the six months this is out, but I really don't see anybody talking about this at the end of the year. With Lars von Trier, it's just a little too much hype, too much taboo, and too much depression. And I'm just kind of maybe sick of that from him, frankly. So if you have seen Nymphomaniac Volume 2 and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.